Hey, Crash Test here, and I die so you don't have to. Welcome to Gameplay Review of Axelay on the Snares. So as always, select your options and then go shot and missile on the same button. Just makes things easier. Trigger speed three. You'll find out why later. Arms installation is complete. Good luck. First thing you'll notice is that the intro music at the start of every level is really good. That's definitely one positive of this game. So you start off and you've got three weapons. You can cycle through them and if you let go of the Y button shooting will change like that, which is you know, quite a nifty little thing, I've not seen that too well, before in too many games. As always, just try not to die, which you will a lot in this game. It is quite hard to, um, to avoid the enemy fire sometimes because you can't see it with this background. No oh, balls, come on, yeah, they, sometimes you just die for stupid reasons like that. Hit detection is slightly off on some objects, but you'll you'll get through that in time with practice. This is probably the quickest part of the game. Just try not to die. Yep, come on. And it's boss time. You've got three weapons, so if you get hit once, then you can't use that weapon anymore get hit again and you can't use that one then you're left with one last remaining weapon. If you get hit again you die, or you lose a life, and then if all your lives go you have to rely on continues. So a decent end of level boss for level 1. Don't get caught in the web because it slows you down. Avoid the fire, and you die is pretty easy. So the levels alternate between vertical and horizontal, and then obviously you've got to make use of your different weapons. So let go of the trigger as before, and it moves back to kill these people, or you can just move up and down. And the remainder of the level is just pretty much like this. Easy standard, simple gameplay. Looks nice, players are right. You tend to get more slowdown on the horizontal levels, but it's not too bad, you know, it's not R-type slowdown. Sorry, super R-type slowdown even. And boss time again. Yes, it's Ed 209 from Robocop, so you can shoot his gun and you can actually angle your, angle your shots to um, shoot up under his helmet, so to speak. I found this way was probably the easiest and quickest to kill him. This is on the normal difficulty level. Oh, bugger. What are you doing? Your left foot stuck. You're not walking at all. Ah, stupid. I wasn't paying attention then. But he should die pretty quickly now. A few more hits and he'll be dead. It's a bit of a cheesy and cheap tactic to, uh, to beat him with.
and great intro music. I'm just messing around. Here. You've got to be careful because some of the enemies spawn right on you, and then you'll obviously die. So it's a bit frustrating. Yeah, and the same here. They'll jump up, and you think, oh, well, you've got plenty of time to get out of the way before you know it, because the craft doesn't move very quickly. You're dead. So that is one frustration with this game. Another middle-level boss. Ah, nice and easy. And just to remain busy level. <laughs> Bugger. Yeah, you do die quite a lot in this game from st st just stupid things. Uh, I've been watching too many of Snestastic's videos. <laughs> I'm only joking, yeah, but we will do it. Okay, another end of level boss buddy. Ah, try to avoid the fire. And again, just shoot the things on the outside of his hat, whatever you call it. And it should be game over. It's not too hard. Ah. Then he, he, he turns. He uh, changes into a, a red dwarf ship. So obviously avoid the fire and then just shoot him. Not too bad. You can shoot his projectile so it does make it a lot easier. Yeah, there you go, eventually he dies. Once again, the music at the starter level is really good. Ah, bugger, that weapon's crap. Yeah, and then I died. Yeah, I hold it down, it doesn't really do that much, so I tap it now and, yeah, you can't really kill people. Oh, come on, you just die so many times if you're playing it for the first few times when you're not sure where the enemies are or their patterns or they just spawn on you or the hit detection is slightly off. One of my uh, few minor gripes about this game. The ship could handle a little bit quicker as well. It feels slightly sluggish and isn't as tight as Space Mega Force, in my opinion. Oh god, who's this? Fucking hell, he's a big bastard, isn't he? Not too hard, just avoid his fire in his hands. And shoot him in the chest. Yeah, it's pretty harmless. Okay, I don't think I showed level 4, it's just a sidewards water level, which uh, I don't like it. And the video will be too long, so we're on to the next level. Again, nice and, well not nice and easy, but yeah, avoid the enemy fire. And it's another boss battle there. Shit, just try and avoid everything. I think this is the end of the, the game boss, yeah, I think it is, yeah. So it is doable, on, on easy level, it's, it's not too bad, you can probably finish it in your first couple of goes. On normal, you probably get to level 5, possibly 6 on your first go, but you'll just get shit on near the end, it's really, really hard. This is on normal level. No, I don't remember this before. Alright, oh, okay. I haven't played it for about 10 years. And they look the same as me, and they fire. Ah, right, okay, I'll get it. I move, they move, I fire, they fire. Yeah, eventually he goes down. Yeah, game over. Not quite. Ah, oh, fucking hell, this bit's bloody impossible. Yeah, I've could cut out me dying about a hundred times there. You do get five continues in the game, so that helps a lot.
So, I rate Axel A, it's a solid 8 out of 10. It could have been an absolute SNES classic if it wasn't for a few minor flaws. I would have liked the game to be a bit faster, but saying that, when a game looks this good, it was always going to be a case of graphics over gameplay. There's a lot of insta-deaths from spawning enemies, but this can be avoided the more you play the game and get used to their attack patterns. Um, gameplay, it isn't bad at all, just don't expect it to be as tight as Space Megaforce or have the variety of weapons. Uh, on the positive side, it obviously looks really good and is instantly recognisable, although the enemies are massive, they, they tend to be on the vertical levels where they don't obscure the screen, which makes a lot of sense and you know other games can, can learn from this. I really like the, the soundtracks as well, especially at the start of each level, you know, and the individual effects work really well. So overall, it's a very good game, ranking above Thunder Spirits and on par with Gradius 3, slightly below Space Megaforce and obviously Smash TV and R-Type 3. I do feel a little cheated value-wise, as with shipping and taxes, importing this to the UK box and complete could cost about £60. So for six levels and a total of five hours gameplay, you'll... You know, you'll finish the easy level but get stuck on normal level near the end with no chance of completion, which is a bit of a kick in the nuts, and I, I never really felt it had the one more go feel. So, you know, minor quibbles aside, it's a, a solid, good looking, great sounding shooter, which, if you get it for about £15 like I did, can be a very worthwhile purchase. Not bad at all. Challenge hard mode, yeah right. Normal mode was bloody hard enough. <laughs> <laughs>